Density. The density of something measures the ratio of its mass to its volume. So we've talked about mass, we've talked about volume, we've been talking about how to deal with units. Density relates the two. You've probably heard the joke, which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? They weigh the same, right? They both weigh a pound. Why does that question throw us off? Which one would take up more space, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? The feathers. Because the density of those substances are different. Bricks are very dense, and feathers are not very dense. Density is a fundamental property of a substance. It doesn't change depending on the size of the substance that you have. It is always the same. We, so we kind of, some of us really understand density and others don't quite get density. And they should have taught you this in elementary school, but I think they didn't. Um, when we talk about whether things are going to float or sink in water, just a regular old two by four, you throw it in a, in a pond, is it going to float or sink? It's going to float. Most wood floats on water. It floats because it is less dense than water. If you cut the two by four in half, will it float or sink? It'll still float. Does cutting it in half change its density? No. The amount of stuff doesn't affect the density. So, you know, Solids floating or sinking in liquids, we kind of understand. So you take, you take some BBs, they're made out of metal, and you throw those in water. Float or sink? Sink. We know that metal sinks. Okay? When we get to liquids, though, some, sometimes we just kind of lose our minds. And so in my Wrigley class, I give a lab practical exam, and I show them a test tube. Here, I'll draw a picture. So I, I give them a test tube, and there's, um, there's two liquids in it, and that's a very bad test tube. Let, let's say it's a graduated cylinder. That's easier to draw. And there's two liquids. So this is one liquid, and that's the other liquid. And one of them floats and one of them sinks. And some of them think that this one is floating because there's less of it, because it weighs less. No, it's because the density is different. And even if you have twice as much, it's going to weigh twice as much, but the density doesn't change. Density is a measure of a heaviness of an object for its size. So when you change the size, you change the mass. And so something doesn't float because it's heavier than water. I'm sorry. It doesn't sink because it's heavier than water. It sinks. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's stop. Rewind. We're talking about floating. Okay. Floating. Something floats on water because it's less dense, not because it weighs less than the water. Okay. Something sinks because it's more dense, not because it weighs more. Is it like when you're floating on top of the pool, and then if you like breathe in a lot of air, it like Yeah, you, your, your body is made up large, you've got a lot of water in your body. And so your, the density of your body is close to that of water, and you can alter it by inhaling air or exhaling air. If you take a big, deep breath and fill your lungs with air, air is a gas, and gases have very low densities. And so when your lungs are full of air, you're going to be less dense than water, and you're going to float. If you let all the air out of your lungs and let yourself go limp, that's where you can sink to the bottom of the pool. If you, have, you, know, if you were able to take a breath down there, then you could float up again. So our bodies are similar in density, so you can kind of make it float or make yourself float or sink. 
Now, there's other aspects to that, which get more into physics. Why does an aluminum rowboat float? It's made out of aluminum. Aluminum's more dense than water. Why doesn't it sink? Well, that has to do with displacement. And because of the shape of the rowboat, it will float because it displaces water. And, and th again, that's into physics. We're not going to go into that. So you can make things that are more dense float, but the shape matters. A, a sphere of aluminum is not going to float. It's going to sink like a rock, sink maybe even faster than a rock. Okay, so that's just a little about density. Different substances have different densities. And one way we can identify different substances is by their densities. You know, there's a lot of things that look alike. Hexane and chloroform and water all look alike. They look like clear liquids. But we can identify them based on their densities. Okay, the hexane will float on water, the chloroform will sink. So we're going to learn how to do calculations with density. So I gave you the equation, and that's something that you should know. Density equals the mass of the object divided by its volume. So we calculate the, the density by taking the mass, dividing by the volume of that mass. <coughs> so um, a liquid has a volume of 22.5 milliliters, a mass of 27.2 grams, calculate the density. This is not a unit conversion problem. This is where we have an equation. We take the numbers and we put them in. So we remember that density is mass divided by volume. So we need to take these numbers and pull them out. And so I'm going to go through these steps for those of you who have issues with word problems. So I took the numbers with their units, pull them out, now identify what are these things. Sometimes the problem tells you what they are, sometimes it doesn't. Here they're saying a volume of, a mass of, a volume of 22.5. So this must be the volume. A mass of 27.2, that's the mass. M for mass, starts with an M. V for volume, volume starts with a V. How else could you tell? You could tell by looking at the unit. Milliliter is a unit of volume. Gram is a unit of mass. So we identify those quantities that were given we, get the, we pull out the equation. We have to take the mass and divide by the volume. 27.2. Write the units in there. Always, always write the units. Then the calculator. 27.2 divided by 22.5. And I get this long, nasty number. It's just eights repeating. What happens to those units? Do they cancel out? No. They're there as a fraction. It was grams over milliliters. It's grams over milliliters. We usually read that grams per milliliter. How many significant figures should this number have? It should have three because each of the numbers that we used to find it were th had three. So 1.21 grams per milliliter. That's the other way to write that um, with a slash all on one line. That's easier to type in to a computer or something. But I would encourage you, if you're going to write it like that at all, only write it that way at the very, very end. Because when you write it like that in your problem, you lose sight of the fact that one's in the numerator and one's in the denominator, and sometimes things cancel out and happen. So when you're doing calculations, always write your fractions vertically. Any questions about that? 
That's like the most straightforward density problem. Here's the mass, here's the volume, calculate the density. So here is your, how your book describes. Here we're going from these given quantities here. We've got two quantities that we're given. They're asking us for, for one. Here the relationship is not a conversion factor, it's an equation. And these are the ones that students usually have less trouble with because you were taught how to deal with equations. Oh, here's an equation. Here are the numbers. I put them in, I solve it, I'm good. This is what you're probably a little more comfortable with than this other stuff I've been teaching you. Now back to the squirrely stuff I've been teaching you. Density can be used as a conversion factor. It's got per units, doesn't it? Grams per milliliter. Grams per cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeter is another unit of volume. And remember, this is one we often forget, one milliliter is exactly the same as a cubic centimeter. So try to tuck that in the back of your head. So here's a question. For a liquid substance with a density of 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter, what volume should be measured to deliver a mass of 68.4 grams? There are two ways to do this problem. One is using algebra and the density equation. The other is using density as a conversion factor. One of them is not better than the other, necessarily. You should use whichever one is more comfortable for you. I'm going to demonstrate how to use the conversion factor method. I think it generally gives better results. So how do we do this? Well, here's a question. We read it through. Let's identify what, what are the numbers in here and the units. So we've got this guy right here, and we've got this guy. We've got two numbers. Let's look at the units, because we have to figure out what do we start with. Where do we start? We're going to start with the 68. Oh, I pointed in the wrong place. We want to start with this one. Why? This is like the feet per lap. Grams per cubic centimeter. That's a conversion factor, or could be a conversion factor. When we write these guys down, write that down as a vertical fraction. 1.32 grams over cubic centimeters. And then we've got our 68 point four grams. So our path here is that we're going to start with the grams and we're going to go to cubic centimeters. What's the relationship? The relationship is given to us as the density. In most of the problems we've done so far, Conversion vectors are the things that are, are, are the same for everybody, for all time. A foot is always 12 inches. This is an example of a conversion factor that is specific to one situation. For this particular liquid, the density is 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter. It's not true for everything. It's just true for this one thing. And so sometimes that happens, like in the example with the track. It was a 1,034 or something feet per lap. That was true for that problem. So the 1.32 is a conversion factor. So we start with the 68.4 grams. And we want to have cubic centimeters on the top and grams on the bottom. So the units cancel out. Same thing we've been doing. Here's our conversion factor, our relationship between grams and cubic centimeters. 1.32 is with gram. It has to stay with gram. You can't separate them. 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter. Sometimes you're bothered. There's no number on the top. Horrors. What do we do? 
It's a one. I'm a chemist. I don't like to write the number one. But for you, I will write the number one. So we get 68.4 times 1 divided by 1.32. 68.4 divided by 1.32 equals... So my calculator is giving me another long mess. How many significant figures should the answer have? Three. So this number has three significant figures. And this, is this exact? No. So this would be three also. So our answer should have three. My calculator is showing me 51.8181818181. I don't think so. Cubic centimeters is volume. Oh. Yeah. Now, it doesn't specify the unit for volume, does it? It doesn't. That's a good question, though. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cheat a little here, and I'm not going to write down everything. I look at this and I say, I need three significant figures. I'm going to write down a couple more from what my calculator says. So it's saying 51.8181. What are the units? Cubic. cubic centimeters. Now I'm going to round it. I need three significant figures. I'm going to keep the five, the one, and the eight. I've got some extras there so I can see what I'm dealing with. And so our answer is 51.8 cubic centimeters. What if we converted the cubic centimeters to what converted? We could do that. We absolutely could. You would be throwing in... Um, this factor of one milliliter per one cubic centimeter. And so that's one that you can just kind of, you can just swap cubic centimeters and milliliters anytime you want because they're exactly the same thing. Or you can write it out and stick it in there. Any questions? Do you see how I did it? Density can be used as a conversion factor. If you're given the mass or the volume and the density, you can calculate the other thing. No algebra involved. So how would you do this using algebra? Let's make this a different color. And I, I don't have a lot of room here. Well, I'm going to do a little writing up here. For algebra, we need to have the equation. Density is mass over volume. And we need to rearrange the equation and solve for what? Volume. Okay. Rearranging an equation like this, anytime there's fractions involved, people tend to make mistakes. Um, some of you can look at that and rearrange it in your head, and that's awesome. Uh, some of you can't. When you have an equation with fractions, um, the fractions mess people up. Let's get rid of the fractions by cross-multiplying. So cross-multiplication is a mathematical technique, and you're like, but there's no fraction on the left side. Well, we can make it into a fraction. The density over 1 is equal to the mass over the volume. I didn't change the equation. I just threw a 1 in there. Cross-multiplying means we're going to, I need another color. We're going to take the top of one side and multiply it by the bottom of the other side. So that's going to be D times V. And then I'm going to do the bottom and the top. What's 1 times M? It's just m, but that's one. Uh, I don't want to do that. I didn't. One times m, so that's just one. That's just m. So now I've I've solved it for mass. Like, great, but I wanted volume. How do we solve it for volume? We need to get rid of the d. So we get rid of the d by dividing both sides by the d. So I'm going to divide this side by d. And if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. Got to be fair. 
the densities cancel out. And so I have my equation now, volume equals the mass divided by the density. I should have gone back to pink there. Oh, well. So down here, where all the numbers are, I'm going to write it in pink so you can tell I'm doing something different. Volume, the volume equals the mass divided by the density. So I'm going to take the mass of uh, 68.4 grams, and I'm going to divide by the density 1.32 grams per cubic centimeter. The numbers there are pretty easy to deal with. You're going to end up with the same number. The units, though, can get a little confusing. I've got gram, I've got two fractions there. I've got a fraction within a fraction. The grams cancel out, and then I have one over one over cubic centimeters, which ends up being cubic centimeters. We're going to get the same answer. I don't know what the percentage is, but there's a percentage of the class that found that pink way to be very confusing. Don't, don't do it that way then. Do the first way. And there's others that like, oh, I like the pink way. I like, you know, I can rearrange equations. Great. Well, then do it that way. Okay? Do it that way. But you got to remember what the equation is. I like the first method because you can just let the units do it for you. You don't have to remember the density equation to do a problem like that. You just put the numbers together so the units work out. Any questions? You may need to use, you may need to actually look up some densities in homework problems. This is a table from your textbook. Table 2.4, densities of some common substances. You do not need to memorize these. I will give you the density if you need it on an exam. But in the homework, they may not give you the density, and so then you have to go look it up. Let's do another example. A, a drop of acetone, which is nail polish remover, or rather nail polish remover is mostly acetone, has a mass of 35 milligrams and a density of 0 0.788 grams per cubic centimeter what is its volume in cubic centimeters? So we read the whole problem, and then let's go back and look at the numbers. Well, there's this guy right here, 35 milligrams. And then this guy kind of got separated from his unit. It's grams per cubic centimeters. 0.788 grams per cubic centimeter. What are we looking for? Volume in cubic centimeters. I'm going to do this using the using uh, the density as a conversion factor instead of the algebra way. Because those of you that like the algebra way, you're good. You're fine. You can figure it out. So I've got these two numbers. This one has a single unit, milligrams. This one has grams per cubic centimeter. That's the conversion factor. I want to start with the other one. So I'm going to start with 35 milligrams. And I want to end up with cubic centimeters. There's a little twist in this problem, isn't there? We have to convert milligrams to grams because the density is grams per cubic centimeter. So if we knew the mass in grams, we could get to cubic centimeters using the density. That relates grams and cubic centimeters. But this isn't in grams. This is milligrams. Ah, they throw something in there. Yeah, we do that. We throw stuff in there. It's okay. 
It's a metric prefix. We know what metric prefixes mean. We can do this. We can convert milligrams to grams. So we made our map, and now we can set up our equation. 35 milligrams. Our map has two arrows. It's got two steps. We've got two fractions. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. Those are the units that go on top. Milligrams to grams to cubic centimeters. The units that go on the bottom are the one from the previous term. We want milligrams to cancel out, so we're going to put milligram down there so that it will cancel out. Poof, go away. In this last term, we want to put grams in the bottom so the grams will cancel out. It's all about the units. How do the units work out? And we're just going to cancel them like they were x's and y's and a's and b's in algebra. Now we need numbers. You don't have to go in order. You don't have to do the first one first. Let's do the last one first. That's not what I wanted to do. So this guy, let's write him as a vertical fraction. 0.788 grams per cubic centimeter. Oh. I made a scribble. Let's see if I can erase that. There we go. 0.788 goes grams, and there's no number with the one uh, centimeters cubed. So 0. Point, I'm writing with an eraser. That doesn't work. 0. 0.788. If you want a number there, write a one. The density is 0. 0.788 grams is equal to one cubic centimeter. Now we have to do, deal with the milligrams and the grams. The prefix, well here we have, a gram equals a gram, right? The <coughs> milli. If I put milli over here, what does milli mean in terms of 10 to the? 10 to the minus 3. So I put milli, the abbreviation on one side, I put what it means on the other side. When we look at this conversion factor, we have the abbreviation in the bottom. I want to put what it means on the top. 10 to the minus third. Turn that into scientific notation by multiplying it by 1. 1 times 10 to the minus third. That looks a little more familiar. Oh, I, can, I know how to put that in my calculator. Any questions? Yeah, if you want a number down here, it's going to be 1. We'll see that chemists seem to have a vendetta against 1s, and we avoid writing them whenever possible. So we've got 35 times 1 EE negative 3 divided by 1 <coughs> times 1 divided by 0.788 equals... So how many significant figures should my answer have? Two. So I'm going to write down a little more than two. It's 0 0.044416, just because I don't feel like copying down all those digits. But write down at least two or three past what you need. So two significant digits. I'm not going to count those leading zeros. I'm going to have the first four and the second four. And what's my unit? cubic centimeters. Now I'm going to round it off 0 0.044 cubic centimeters. You could put that in scientific notation. It doesn't say you have to. This is kind of my um, way of de deciding do I put it in scientific notation or not. If I can look at the number and immediately see how many zeros are there, I'll tend to leave it in decimal form. 
if I have to count or even pause and think about how many zeros are there, I'm going to put in scientific notation because I don't want to copy it down wrong and get an answer that's incorrect because that's just silly. So 0 0.044, you can easily see that. If you want to put it in scientific notation, absolutely fine. Any questions? Yes? It's two. Yeah. Yeah. Those leading zeros. A lot of students think that that zero right before the four, a lot of students, you know, you just have to get it through your brain. You're in good company if you're thinking this way, but that zero is not considered significant. Leading zeros never, whether they're before or after the decimal point. So we're not going to count that. So we're going to count this four and that four. And we're going to go with two. Our initial number was two. This relationship is exact, so we don't have to think about that one. And this one has three. And so generally, your initial value is what's going to limit the sig figs in your answer. Any other questions? Here's another example. A pure gold metal bar displaces 0.82 liters of water. What is its mass in kilograms? And they give us the density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. We read through the problem. We're going to identify what we're given here. We've got this one number. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Generally, if something is thrown in at the end in parentheses like that, you're probably going to need it, but that's usually not going to be your starting number. But this is another number that we're given. And then what is the unit we're trying to find? Kilograms. So again, here there's two numbers, and yeah, this is in parentheses, but let's say we you know, kind of overlooked that. Grams per cubic centimeter per conversion factor. This is what we're starting with. So we're starting with the 0 0.82 liters, and we're ending up with kilograms. Sometimes it's tempting to just start calculating. Oh, I'll figure it out as I go along. Yeah, but you might start off in the wrong direction. Let's just figure out our path. Let's plan out our route before we start driving. Well, we've got that um, grams per cubic centimeters, and let's maybe write it up here vertically to help ourselves see it more clearly. Grams and cubic centimeters, and we're starting with liters and we're ending with kilograms, and none of them are matching up. What do we do? We might want to work backwards. From kilograms, we could get grams. And that's encouraging because gram is a unit in that density. So we have grams per cubic centimeter in the density. So from grams, we could go to what? Cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeters to liters. Seems like a bit of a gulf there. What's another name for cubic centimeter? Milliliter. A, a cubic centimeter is one milliliter. They are exactly equal. It's just a different name. Can we go from liters to milliliters? Yeah. Now, there's different ways of handling this cubic centimeter, millimeter thing, milliliter thing, sorry. So one way is to say, okay, well, I've got liters, and I'm going to go to milliliters. So I'm just going to, in here, instead of cubic centimeters, I'm going to write milliliters there. Those are exactly the same. 
it's okay to do that. So this guy, instead of cubic centimeters, I'm going to write milliliters. That's the same. It's okay. You could also throw another step in there and convert from milliliters to cubic centimeters using the conversion factor of 1 to 1. So we're going to do it this way. So we've, we've got our path. Liters to milliliters to grams to kilograms. You guys okay with me just crossing out cubic centimeters and writing milliliters? You could do cubic centimeters, yeah, but then you're going to have to throw in a, another conversion factor. Okay, so 0 0.821 liters. I've got three arrows. I've got three fractions. Liters to milliliters to grams to kilograms. Liters to milliliters to grams, to kilograms. But this is the one I'm using. So I'm putting, I take that path that I figured out, and that goes on the top, and that just guides me to do everything. And so I put liters down here, they cancel out. I put milliliters down here, they cancel out. I put grams down here, they cancel out. Which factor do you want to put the numbers in for first? Let's do the middle one, 19.3. Does it go with grams or milliliters, the number? It goes with grams. 19.3 grams is how many milliliters? One. If there's no number there, it's a one. That came from this guy up here, which was in here. I just said, okay, I recognize that another name for cubic centimeter is milliliter. Instead of Thomas, I'm going to call him Tommy. Same, same difference. How about kilograms and grams? What does kilo mean? A thousand or ten to the three. So here on the top, I've got... The, the abbreviation kilo, I'm going to write what it means on the other side of the line. And then in this first one, milli, milli means 10 to the minus 3. Milli is on the top. I'm going to write what it means on the other side of the line. I'm not going to put milli and 10 to the minus 3 together. So this is 10 to the minus 3. So that's the same as 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Over here, this is 1 times 10 to the third. There are other ways to put those in. I'm just going to be consistent because if you follow this pattern, it always works. And if you know how to do other things that seem easier to you, that's fine as long as it always works. 0.821 divided by 1 EE minus 3 times 19.3 divided by 1 EE3 equals. So this equals 15.8453. And what's the unit? Kilograms. How many significant figures should that have? Why? Oh, I, I threw a one in there. Okay. I saw leader, and I don't know what I did. I lost my mind. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so let's double check our math there. 0.82 divided by 1 EE minus 3 times 19.3 divided by... Ag. Okay, I screwed up. It's very, it's very similar. It would round, end up rounding the same. Should be um, eight two six. 
Okay. And I should have two significant figures. So that's going to round off to what? 16. 16 kilograms. Any questions? Yes. You can use this one doing algebra. Yeah, you can do this using algebra. The thing is, you're going to have to do some unit conversions on each end, perhaps. But you can do it that way.